quick announcement at the end of the video. Make sure to watch till the end. Alright guys, welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today what we're going to be looking at is that structure series. We're going to be covering the structure element and how to set up your structures in M Creator's uh, UI. So it's a little bit different than using data packs because there's a little bit of additional steps that you need to do, but I'll be covering all the stuff you need to know today and uh, we'll be looking at a few different things. So uh, the first thing is first, I do have a couple structure or, or structure blocks uh, for the structures here. The problem is we don't actually have something we can export just yet for actually making them work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and export this one. Um, this is the part that's going to connect to the main one, which is going to be this one here, but we can basically go ahead and just use these settings uh, for basically our test. So we, we don't need to go ahead and make any changes to this jigsaw block. If you haven't watched the jigsaw block tutorial in this series already, I suggest go back, going back and watching that video. It'll make a lot more sense when we actually get to this particular part with that particular structure. So I've also covered structure blocks if you haven't watched that part either. So and different uh, air blocks, which is all used in this particular tutorial. If we turn on to the um, detect invisible blocks, you can see that I have some invisible ones in these structures for how I'm generating it. So we can definitely go back and watch those uh, three parts and then come back to this video if you haven't already and then we can get started. So with that being said, let's go ahead and save this particular one because we're going to need to make changes to this jigsaw block in a short while. So. We're going to need to go ahead and save this. I'm going to call this uh, just house and we're going to call it maybe uh, part and then we're going to go ahead and save it. So that's going to be saved to our f world folder. Um, basically, this is there's a save in your uh, workspace files and that's basically where it's going to be saving to. So if you delete this world, it's going to delete all your, uh, works, your um, saved things to that folder. Um, though if you import it to mCreator, it will still be in mCreator, so just keep that in mind. Alright, so now that we've exported it, I still have the game up. I'm just going to leave it up for the moment. I don't need it necessarily up, but we do need to go back in there eventually, so I'm just going to leave it up for now. We're going to go to the Structures tab under the Resources and we're going to Import from Minecraft. Given that your part is still in the uh, Workspace folder for, or not Workspace, the Save folder for your structures, we can just go ahead and select it from this drop down list. If you have multiple worlds, it will say the world name and then a colon and then the name of that structure in that particular file. So you might need to sift through a bunch of other structures to find the one that you have. If you click OK, then it's going to import that particular part to the um, structures list here. So we can then use that in our structure. OK, so let's go ahead and go to the workspace or mod elements. We're going to create a structure. I'm going to call this one house. And then what we're going to do is actually check a few things out. So the first thing that I should probably note is the house registry. If we go ahead and save this right now, it will, um, we'll be able to take a look at the house registry. So let's do that quickly. I'm just going to make sure that we have selected our structure uh, for generating. It should be the house part right here. And we're going to also select the biome. I'm just going to actually give this a um, is overworld, which is going to generate it anywhere in the overworld. And then we can go ahead and click save for now. So if we go to the tab up at the top here, uh, we can select different types of workspace, um, like viewing display types. So there's title and then there's a whole bunch of other ones. We want the list one, I think. Nope, maybe not the list details. There we go. We got details. And then what you're going to look at is the registry name for that particular structure because we're going to need that registry name when we export the main um, structure type because we're going to need that for the pool. 
So whatever this registry name is, is going to be what the first part of your pool name is. And then followed by that is it's going to be a underscore. So now that we know that the registry name is just house, we can go back into Minecraft and we're going to configure this um, uh, particular part over here for our pool. Now we're going to want to put this under our own namespace. So I'm going to put this under test because this is the name of the workspace. If you're not familiar with the workspace name, you can go to the workspace settings and you would open up this. I'm going to have to close out the game for that in just a second, but let me just, just keep in mind that it's called test. We can also see the workspace name up here, but that's not always accurate. So definitely go into your workspace settings and it should be your mod registry or mod ID or something like that. I'll show you in a little bit. So then what we want is house because that's the registry. And then what we also want is to put an underscore. Anything after this part right here is going to be our name of our pool name. So basically it's the registry of the structure underscore. And then what we want is the uh, pool name that we're going to be giving it. So what I'm going to just call this one is parts. Uh, parts and then that will be our pool name that we're basically going to be adding our structures to. So with that being said, um, there is a couple things that I want to quickly go over. Uh, we're just going to basically save this. And inside our structure, it's pretty empty at the moment in our structure. We don't really have anything in here outside of some pots and some stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead grab the structure block and we can use pretty much any block as long as it's not used in our structure and I'm going to go ahead and place a couple of these uh, like this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a villager uh, spawn egg and the reason why I'm blocking him off is for a couple reasons it prevents his AI from trying to pathfind and he will not basically wander off. The other thing is it keeps them in place from wandering off from the structure in our test world. So that's really yeah. important. So we're going to plop them yeah. down like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to probably put a workstation over here just so he has something to do. Yeah. And let's see if we can find a workstation. Maybe we want him to be a librarian. So we'll go ahead and do yeah. that. And then we probably need a bell for the village thing as well. So what we'll do is we'll put that outside here just so it's kind of decorated and everything so you should have a nice little house now everything should be set up so when we go ahead and save the structure what we can do is we can export all this it'll we can save it as a to include entities so we want to check this box and set done and then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that everything's set up so it looks good and we're going to, I think this is, is this the house part? Yeah, so we're going to need to export our house part again. So what I'm going to do is actually go ahead and say this house part two, just so it doesn't have any uh, conflict with the original structure. And then what we're going to do with this one is we're going to just basically set this to house main. And then we can save that. So we know which ones are which. We need the second one and then the first one for the generation. So again, um, with this in mind, we have our part that connects on this side. And then we have our main structure, which is going to be generating the part on this side. So that's basically the rundown of what we need to do. Now that we have the pool name set up, we can go ahead and actually create the structure itself and set up the jigsaw block. So let's do that right now. So we're gonna go into our house element for the structure. And the first thing that we'll see is biomes to generate structure in. This is the generation structure, like the tag or biome, specific biome where um, the structure should be generating in. So basically any biomes that you add to this list will be where you can basically generate in, the, where the structure will generate in. Now, um, I'm not sure if you can add multiple tags. I don't think there is a way that you can do that. It can't be empty, but uh, if you need multiple or run into errors with multiple tags, then most likely you can only support one tag. 
Um, if it's um, multiple biomes and you're trying to generate L on that, it might also have errors. So if you need multiple biomes, uh, then I suggest making your own tag and then putting it under that particular tag. Um, for the next setting down here, we have uh, structure chunk distribution. Now I had to look this one up, but uh, Wiki says that uh, the um, we have the spacing, which is this one right here. And that one controls the distance between the two neighboring generation attempts. So uh, the value can be zero to uh, 4,900 or 4,096 4, inclusive. So basically what I'm getting is this is probably has to do with how far apart the two attempts for generating the structure is going to be. So um, basically the average distance uh, for say if you were to have two villages is going to try to make a distance um, between those two parts. Uh, now there is another setting for separation. Now I'm thinking this might be the amount of uh, blocks between the two points. So the first one is basically like the separation part. This number needs to be higher than the separation. So spacing needs to be higher than the separation. So I'm thinking this might be actually the part that is between the two villages or between the two structures uh, in chunks. So basically you have five chunks here and that will be the total distance between the two chunks and then you have like two which is like how close apart or they are i'm guessing i'm not entirely sure i just know that this number needs to be shorter than the other one we're going to leave these two for now then we have the generation stage now it should say under the help here okay it doesn't actually explain too much there uh there's different um versions of this now depending on your generation in your world basically what this acts as is what particular part in the world generation it should generate in generally you want surface structures for your structure but uh, if that's only really if you're on the surface you might need to go to underground structures if it's something like a dungeon or something like that And then we have type of reference ground detection. So this is based on the um, ground detection of where it's going to be generating. Now, there is some things that you need to keep in mind when you're using this. And that uh, basically if you're using the structure start height, which is going to allow you to offset the structure um, placement and stuff, you can actually put it underground or in the sky using this particular distribution. Now, this is a little bit different, but it also disables the setting here. Uh, reason for that is this one will only detect uh, the surface of the uh, world um, with the, um, say if you want it to generate in water, then you would have ocean floor. This would allow you to generate on the ocean floor. This one would allow you to generate on the surface only so it would put it on top of the water it's just basically where it's going to collide with the first block from the sky down and basically you want the ones with the wg or um, i think the motion blocking might work as well or motion blocking leaves but uh, i don't think the ocean floor or world surface would be a valuable or valid one because they're not during generation you might be able to try it and see if it works not sure though if not fall back to the uh, wg version which is world generation that's what it stands for so we're just going to leave it on surface generation because i want it to generate on the surface this one uh the generate start structure start height this is if you enable this this disables the ground detection but we can basically set the minimum height for it to generate at and the maximum height. And what we can do from there is we can basically set a different, like a different settings for the uh, generation form. So basically what this will do is it will allow you to control um, how the particular uh, structure is gonna generate. So we have uniform, which is going to do it anywhere randomly between these two heights. Uh, the 
tap rods or whatever it's called is going to do it somewhere mostly in the middle and the other ones I'm not too sure I think varied based to bottom I'm not sure but these other ones uh, based bottom and then very based bottom uh, you'll have to look that one up on the minecraft wiki the next thing that we have over here is a train adaption this is basically how it's going to uh, generate the structure around the thing like the environment now Despite features uh, not having train adaption, what this structures do, and basically when you go to a village, you might have noticed that some villages are in cliffs and stuff like that. Might, there might be overhangs and stuff. Uh, those are based on the train um, adaption. There's a few different types. Of one, Barry will basically encase it entire exterior of the structure with um, basically something for it to like be hidden from. I think the ruins or trail trail and uh, tails update uses that one. I think it was added then. Uh, there's um, other ones here. Bread box is our beard box. That one I think is used by, what was it? I think either the, that one was the um, villages or it might've been the one below. Uh, that end city one of the two are for those ones so if you're going with a structure you'll have to go back to my structure tutorial for doing it by hand and taking a look at that series as well I'll provide all the links for those videos in the description but uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead with um, probably beard thin and we're going to test that one out And then this is going to be our starting structure for the one, think of it as your um, town square or your city center. Uh, this is basically the part that's going to be generating. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to grab the main structure. And then what we can do is we can set some other settings up. So there is one other thing, train projection to train. So basically what this is, is it's going to allow you to configure your structure a little bit more. Rigid is basically what it's going to do when it's, when you're comparing it to a village, it's like houses, uh, things that need to keep its form, where uh, train matching is basically how the train in villages for the roadways, the paths actually generate. It's going to match the train. So those are the two different types. Now the last setting that we have here on this particular page is block to not replace. So basically remember when we went and placed those structure blocks down in the um, thing to keep the villager, we can use this to basically tell it to not generate those particular blocks and the villager will basically be free when it's um, when the structure is generated. All right, moving on to Jigsaw. Now this is where it gets a little bit fun. So the first setting up here, what we have is generation depth. Now this goes up to 20 now. So basically what uh, we can do now with this is if you have a structure that needs to generate uh, multiple different um, instances. So basically with villages, what you had is it used to go up to seven and that's how many times the jigsaw blocks can connect. So basically with what we have here is uh, with our two structures and we have the starting one and then the other one, we only need a generation depth of one. But if we decide to add more different parts to the structure, maybe add additional decorations or props that might we might need additional depths so that's basically any time that you have a part so when our first part connects to our our main part connects to our part of our house then if we decide to put more additional jigsaw blocks on that part then we're going to need to make sure that we have room for the depth uh, if it's low too low and it doesn't have that particular part the jigsaw blocks won't generate and it will basically just end there. So uh, make sure that you have enough. Uh, before on older versions, it only used to go up to seven, but in 2024.3, uh, you can go up to 20 now. 
So that's basically based on how structures generate now in Minecraft. The other thing is um, distance from main structure. So basically what this is, is the distance which is considered the structure. Um, villages consider, have this little buffer zone around the structure itself. And what this means is it's going to consider anything um, with a distance. So basically from the center point out, so the radius of how many blocks of, um, I think it's blocks of the, where the structure is considered. So I think this also might affect the generation as well. So um, minimum distance, further variation, terrain. Um, yeah, so basically how far the structure will be able to generate. So if you want it to generate really far and stuff, you can increase this number to a higher number. It goes up to 116 and you can basically generate your structure up to that amount of distance uh, from the center of the structure where the first part is generating. Then we have our pools. So when we're putting our pool name, all we need to do is make sure that we have the parts, like the, the additional part after that. So in our case, we just need to put parts here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our second part here for our structure. Now this is the structure that's gonna be generating in the pool list. You can add multiple structures per pool in this particular list. You can also have multiple pools as well if you need different things to categorize uh, in the structure. Maybe you have uh, decorations under one, um, you might have house parts under two, you might have paths or something for another pool for things that it can grab from. <clears throat> now with the pools, basically what this is, is just a list of structures which the um, jigsaw block can grab from. Now, when we're actually going to grab these structures, what it's going to be looking for is the target name and the name of the structure. So those parts need to match. And if they're not in this particular pool, it's just going to ignore that particular entry. So if it can't put it on that particular part, it's not going to matter too much. The entry weight is similar to how um, other weights in Minecraft work. Basically, if you have a two and a one, then basically this is going to be higher. It's going to be a value between three rather than 100%. So basically, um, this is two thirds of the weight of what this other one would be. And if we were to look at a, a two and two, then that's gonna be the same as uh, one half. So basically that's how the weights work. If you're categorizing it all into different structures, um, you might need to play around with your weights in order to see what would look best. We also have the uh, propagation for train. Uh, so basically how we're gonna be generating these particular parts. We have the same one options as before, the rigid and train matching. I'm gonna leave the part one on there. And you can also select blocks to not place. So we're going to actually set a structure block just to make sure that uh, we don't generate the structures around the villager. Now, the only other thing that we have up here is the fallback pool. Basically, what this does is it will, when the structure gets terminated for some reason, uh, for example, if it um, will collide with another structure part or generation part, what this will do is it will try to um, run a pool from another pool. So if you had another pool, say we go ahead and add another pool, we could call this um, fallback. And we would basically go ahead and select our fallback uh, proceed or pool here. And anything in this particular list for our structures, it's going to try to generate from this fallback pool. So basically at the end of the paths, when villages generate, it usually has a fallback pool for end pieces. It's not very noticeable because they're not designed to be that noticeable in the villages, but uh, they're usually at the end of the very path. And uh, you might notice certain patterns like different um, noise and stuff at the end of the um, 
path itself and that's basically what's happening here is it's basically using the fallback function for that particular part. All right, so that's basically it. Uh, that's all the settings that we need to cover for the uh, jigsaw. They're pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead in game and we're going to just make sure that everything's set out quickly. We're just gonna make sure that this is on main and our jigsaw block is going to call from the parts pool. And we're going to make sure that it's on our parts structure. So we're not actually gonna use this uh, at all. We're just gonna leave it empty. And I'm going to have it uh, probably leave it at two and we'll set this to there. We don't need it that high, but that's fine. So we can close out Minecraft and then we can go ahead and start up, uh, just build the workspace just to make sure everything works. So we're just gonna pop into the world and we should start to see some structures popping up around here. I'm not sure how far apart they'll generally generate, but um, as you can see here, this is how the structures will generate with the bread fin or whatever it's called. So we also have a villager here. He's just wandering around. He also has his um, workstation there. He has his bed. He's no longer blocked in that particular corner. So that's basically how you can generate it. As you can see, this whole house is generated properly. So that's great. And um, you can fly around and see if there's another one. So there's another one over here. That's basically the distance between the two attempts. And there's another one over here. So there's a couple distances. They're completely random at uh, that. But you can see that there's always kind of like train underneath and that's because of the um, setting if we open up here that's the um, option here we could set it to none and it'll just generate the structure directly on the train but if you want it to blend a little bit more you might want want this particular one as well it makes it look a little bit nicer and such so so that that's basically how you generate an m creator it's pretty straightforward um just a little bit of tweaking for the pool name and that's pretty much it i have this friend that has their own server hosting company and they have the lowest prices in the server hosting community and they've given me a promo code to give to you guys so if you want to get a good deal for the first month then you can use the promo code northwest for 45 percent off your first month offer expires july 19th 2034 the link to their site is in the description so outside of that, uh, thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. We'll start getting into some more advanced tutorials for structure generation in the near future. So uh, definitely tune in and subscribe if you haven't already and leave me a comment of what you found useful in this video. Thanks for watching. Peace out.